Hello and welcome to Abdow Avenue. This is Jason Abdow and today we are going to be talking about the latest album from Atlanta rapper 2 Chains, Pretty Girls Like Trap Music. Now I gotta be honest with everyone and say that I'm not too well versed in 2 Chains' discography. I remember back when his debut album Based on a True Story came out, I listened to some of it some of it worked for me, some of it really didn't, and I just felt like there was nothing really remarkable about what he was doing. He wasn't really doing anything that his contemporaries weren't already doing better. So I kind of just... I kind of just ignored him for the most part. Uh, I would really just know him from the few features he would do here and there. Uh, most notably last year, his, I believe, Grammy winning per performance with Chance the Rapper and Lil Wayne on the song No Problem off of Chance the Rapper's Coloring Book mixtape, and I thought his verse was pretty fun. I know people kind of kind of critiqued it for that uh, line, run shit like diarrhea. It, it's a little stupid, but I think that's kind of the charm of 2 Chainz, so it's kind of kept him uh, still relevant after all this time, is... He's making, you know, standard trap music, but he's always got that personality. He's always kind of got that light sense of humor. Uh, and I feel like he's just... It's not as in-your-face as someone like Lil Yachty, maybe. Uh, where I feel like they kind of take their stupid up to 11. And 2 Chainz is a little more reserved with his stupidity, uh, to put it nicely. Uh, so, yeah, I really had no expectations going into this new album. Um... I had heard uh, from a lot of people that this was by far his best project, and that meant very little to me. Uh, so, I, But I was just curious to see what 2 Chains would deliver on his latest album, and I've got to say I was fairly impressed by this project. Uh, especially right from the beginning on the song Saturday Night, we kind of get this little piano melody intro, uh, followed by these guitars that just kind of kick things off and really just swell into this intense beat that really complement 2 Chainz really well, and he's rapping about uh, kind of coming from the trap, I guess, uh, coming from the streets, and thanking everyone along the way. He kind of mentions uh, Ludacris, who he had originally signed on with his uh, Disturbing the Peace record label. I feel like you can tell here that 2 Chainz is kind of coming to terms with the fact that he's kind of aging. He's almost 40 now. He's got three kids, I believe. He's kind of becoming that middle-aged family man, and you can definitely tell with a lot of the lyrics on this entire project, especially this song and the subsequent song, uh, Riverdale Road, which is about a trap house that he used to uh, work in. And you got this introspective, personal uh, vibe, I guess, from him in the lyrics. I hope his fans uh, kind of like this side of him. He's taking the time to put these thoughtful songs on this project it's not just one banger after the other and I can appreciate that and I'm sure that's what most critics are appreciating as well and following those first two tracks which I said were I think some of the strongest on this entire album uh, we get the single I believe it was the first single off of this project Good Drink and I think this is a perfectly passable uh, banger it's, it's not really for me I found it a little bland personally uh, and Quavo's contributions he makes a reference to Harambe which is when this song first came out all the way back in January I felt that reference was super outdated so now that it's June I think that reference is like a solid year old at this point so eh. I mean you gotta do it for the memes you gotta bring the memes into it but I think it it was a little more stupid than funny and Gucci Mane is totally fine on this track too uh, but just like I said, this uh, wasn't really doing too much. I don't think I'm going to revisit this song in particular. The one I did like a lot more was the Travis Scott collaboration, 4AM. And even though this is another pretty simple banger, I think this one delivers much more. Uh, I really like Travis Scott's contributions. I love him in certain quantities. And on this track, he delivers exactly how he's supposed to deliver. And if you like Travis Scott, this is exactly the kind of stuff you've come to expect from him at this point. Uh, following this, we get the song Doris Wanging, Not Much to Say. That's one of the more forgettable tracks on this album, in my opinion. Following this, we get a uh, few songs in a row that have some pretty big features, starting with Realize with Nicki Minaj, which I would say is half of a good song. We have a softer, more melodic beat in the background, so 
2 chains, I think, uses that beat to his advantage. Uh, he seems a little more, like I was saying earlier, a little more introspective, a little quieter. Once Nicki comes on this track, I feel like it kind of goes downhill. Um, I have nothing against Nicki Minaj, and even when she's doing more soft, slower stuff like this, I think she can be effective, but I just felt that on this track, uh, she's just doing her standard braggadocia thing, and not really in an interesting way. And then she brings up that Remy mob beef that has been going on for a few months, and it just totally doesn't fit for me. I think, I think everybody at this point is so done with that beef, it really hasn't gone anywhere interesting for me. The songs that have have Remy Ma and Nikki coming at each other, they've all just been so bland to me. It's just, it's just such a nothing of a beef, and I'm so done with it. And the fact that she had to really hammer that down in her verse on this, I think really weighs the song down. Then we get this, uh, the song Poor Fool with Sway Lee, and I think this is one of my favorite songs on here, which is surprising, because uh, I haven't really liked much of anything Sway Lee has been on. I know everyone thinks Black Beatles is like the greatest song ever, I just, not my thing. Uh, but I think it's kind of interesting how he's used here. He's uh, similar to what Kendrick Lamar did on Fear a couple months ago. He's kind of singing from the perspective of 2 Chainz's mother. And just kind of, you know, telling him to stay off the streets. And his his real family is what's going to be there for him. And 2 Chainz's contributions, again, are really good. I think this is another one of those really solid uh, personal songs from 2 Chainz. And it kind of gives you a sense of his childhood and the nostalgia. And I think 2 Chainz really handles that well. Uh, following this, we get the song Big Amount with Drake. And this is another one of those bragging songs that I think is just totally fine. Not anything special, though. Uh, Drake, uh, Drake's better than usual, I would say, on this song. He's rapping, so that's a step in the right direction. And, yeah, that's really all I can say. It's kind of boring. It's been out for, like, almost a year, I think, at this point. I think he, this song was included on an earlier mixtape. And, yeah, if you like this song, it's here still. And I, 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 I'm not a big fan of when artists, like, recycle songs like this, but what are you gonna do? After that, we get It's a Vibe with Trey Songz, Ty Dolla Sign, and Janae Aiko. And what makes this song work so well for me is not only the vibey uh, nature of it, as the title would imply, but I just think that artists all complement each other really well here. It's got that R&B tinge, and the hip-hop is not super aggressive. I think it all really flows together nicely. Uh, so this is just a really well-assembled song, I think. And following that, we get a pretty good banger Rolls Royce bitch, uh, which I can imagine fans of trap bangers just turning this up to 11 and just singing along with the Rolls Royce bitch would, you know. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, yeah, that, it's, it's, again, it's, it's not like the most complex song <laughs> ever, but it's fun, and that's really all it needs to be, and I found it a little more memorable than some of the other bangers, especially the ones that follow it. Sleep When You Die, that's kind of a lyrical sentiment that's been repeated time and time again. Uh, not super interesting this time around. Uh, the song Trap Check, again, trap music. I feel like this is kind of basic trap music. And we get the song Blue Cheese after that. And this has Migos. Migos are totally fine. Migos does what Migos does. If you like Migos, they're doing Migos. But I think 2 Chains has some pretty funny lines. Uh, he starts the song off talking about his side chick texting him uh, that she's pregnant. And he's all offended that her main guy has <laughs> got her pregnant. It's, it's again, it's totally like not PC or whatever. But this album isn't trying to go for that PC vibe at all. And I appreciate the fact uh, that 2 Chains is able to kind of mix in the more personal stuff with the stupid stuff that I think people uh, have come to appreciate from his music. Stupid might be a little, a little harsh, but you understand what I'm saying. Now, OG Kush Life did nothing for me on this one. Uh, not really my kind of song. And the last two songs, though, I think are the strongest. First two and the sec last two songs are both really great. Uh, we have the song Bailon with Pharrell Williams. 
who also produced the song, and it's just as great as you would imagine from a Pharrell song. It's got this tropical, bouncy beat. It has a total summer vibe. This is like, needs to be released as a single any day now. Uh, this is the perfect kind of song to play over the summer. It doesn't really have that trap vibe that a lot of the other songs preceding it do, but overall I still think it's a fun song, and this album isn't really shooting for consistency. Uh, the lyrics obviously are wildly inconsistent, and the general types of songs that are on here I think aren't always flowing well together, but on their own I think they work fairly well for the most part. And the closing track is very much not a trap song, uh, Burglar Bars with Monica. It's um, got some lusher, more instrumental production, and it just kind of shows 2 Chains rapping about, uh, similar to what he was doing on Saturday night, he's rapping about uh, coming this far from the streets and getting signed and just kind of becoming a star in his own right. And I feel like that was a really nice way to end it off. It kind of felt like a thank you to everybody who's helped them this far along. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this album more than I expected. I wouldn't say this is anything great. This won't be making my year-end list or anything. I'd say it's more fun than the kind of music that 2 Chains' contemporaries are putting out. Uh, if you love trap music, this is something you should definitely listen to if you're a 2 Chains fan. I'm sure you won't be disappointed in this at all. And if you're just a fan of hip-hop, I guess, give it a shot. It's fun, it's a little mindless, but I'm sure you'd be pleasantly surprised. Uh, if you're looking for something like Kendrick Lamar or Joey Badass or, you know, one of those more thought-provoking artists, this isn't really for you. Uh, this isn't really trying to break any barriers. This isn't reinventing the wheel by any means. But it's a fun album, and I don't feel weird giving it a B-. I think that's pretty fitting for this album. So yeah, like I said, this isn't really my area of expertise. So let me know if you agree, disagree, love or hate this album. Either way, just comment below, let me know what you think. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching.